And now let's preview the week, the week ahead, the week that begins on January uh, 30th and ends in February. February 2nd, if I'm not mistaken. So on Monday, we have a few figures on Monday. I mean, in many cases, Mondays are quiet. This time we have the Spanish GDP, uh, first uh, re release. German inflation figures, which jumped last month uh, in December. So now we have the preliminary number for January, and it could be very interesting. And the US core PC price index, um, the figure that the Fed watches for inflation. Things warm up on Tuesday with a rate decision from Japan. The inflation figures for all of uh, the Eurozone, Canadian GDP. So that, of course, also moves the Canadian dollar that we've talked about. USCB consumer confidence, the conference boards consumer confidence, and the jobs report from New Zealand released only once per quarter. And then February uh, 1st, the first day of a uh, new month, we have top tier figures, manufacturing PMI in the United Kingdom, the US ADP non from payrolls, a big hint for the uh, non from payrolls on Friday. The ISM manufacturing PMI, also top tier figure. A look at the manufacturing sector. Let's see if they're cheered up by Trump or not. And the Fed decision. This Fed decision, we'll preview it, of course, next uh, week as well, but this Fed decision is um, not as important because in December we had a rate hike, we had new forecasts, we had the dot plot, we had Yellen's press conference. This time, no change is expected, no press conference, no dot plot. Nevertheless, the tone of this decision, if they're more upbeat on inflation, less upbeat, more upbeat on the economy, less upbeat, this makes a difference for the US dollar. So even though it's a minor decision, it still rocks the dollar. On the Thursday, it's the UK's Super Thursday. We have a rate decision in the UK and the quarterly inflation report. So in November, in the last big decision from the Bank of England, they decided uh, to move from a bearish bias, from a dovish bias to a neutral stance. And uh, I don't think they're expected to change anything now, but this is still quite important. Of course, there's a press conference, there's lots of new data. And we're, we're seeing how the pound is sensitive uh, to anything that's going on. So there will be lots of fireworks over there. And on Friday, we have Chinese manufacturing PMI, UK services PMI, the most important purchasing managers, managers index, and of course, the US non-farm payrolls. This time, we will get the ISM non-manufacturing PMI only after the NFP. That means it's less important, the ISM non-manufacturing PMI. But it also means that the non from payrolls will be a bit less expected. This is uh, the non from payrolls report for January. Basically, you can attribute this to the Obama administration, the former administration, and this is what uh, Trump gets. He might dash the report, uh, whatever outcome. What's important for markets is the level of wages more than the gain in jobs. Of course, if it's a huge disaster in jobs or a huge surprise, makes a difference. But assuming we'll have more or less as expected in the headline figure, wages are important, especially as last time they reached um, the highest level since 2009 at 2.9% year over year. So wages uh, are more important than the headline figure, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, well, not only in my opinion, I would say. Anyway, next week, uh, turn of the month, that means uh, we have build up to the non from payrolls, top tier uh, purchasing managers indices, a big decision from the Bank of England, and also decision from the Bank of Japan and the Federal Reserve, which even though it isn't the big decision, it is still of importance. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so 